within physical change in sedimentary rock formation, I want to mention clostic deposition, which is a classification based on particle size. As you can see in the animation, the energy of the water flow carries sand and silt grains, pebbles, rocks, all various sizes, and deposits them on the bottom as the energy decreases. As the water slows down, the heavier particles are dropped off first, with the smaller ones being carried a little further until all are eventually dropped and deposited, creating clostic deposition. In this river delta, you see these streams and rivers carrying sand, silt, and rocks to the ocean. As these particles get deposited into layers and are buried, pressure and temperature turn them into sedimentary rock. As these particles get deposited into layers and are buried, pressure and temperature turn them into sedimentary rock. So let's review. In making sedimentary rock, you can have either sandstone or carbonate. Usually, when sandstone is converted to sedimentary rock, there is a physical process called deposition. Further, within this deposition, you get a chemical change called cementation. Limestone, or carbonate sedimentary rock, is formed by a chemical change. This is called precipitation. Now, using data collected on the ocean floor, underneath the Earth and at the Earth's surface, geologists build maps, surface and underground. They map out the kinds of structures that are present. They are looking for the formations, layers of rock extending over a broad area. What kinds of formations are they looking for when they are looking for oil? There are a couple of basic ones. On this map, the formations are identified. Let's look at the depositional processes and environments in more detail. The first are carbonates. Here you find the dunes. If you find an ancient dune, you will probably say that the weather there was dry at the time it was deposited. Meandering and braided rivers or riverbeds can be identified by the size of the boulders or the rocks that were deposited by moving water. If we find big rocks, we say the water had high energy, that the water moved fast. If we find a lot of mixed, small ones, we say that it was a big, wide river moving slowly. Here we have an alluvial fan. Alluvial fans are fan-shaped deposits of water-transported material and typically form at the base of a steep slope. Coarse-grained, especially at their mouths, they tend to be relatively fine-grained at their edges. Deltas, or river plains, are crisscrossed with rivers and streams of slow-moving water. There, large plants, like trees and animals, flourished. If you find very small silt particles, you will probably be looking at a lake bottom. At one time, these lakes were underwater. Something altered the source of this accumulated water causing it to evaporate. In these ancient deltas, you can find minerals and hydrocarbons, like coal. In fact, if you were a coal mining engineer, you would look for ancient deltas. Here we have beaches. What is interesting about beaches is that they have been bombarded by steady waves, so the sand grains are almost always the same size. We call that well-sorted deposition. They are all uniform in size because they have been ground down by the energy of the wave action over a long period of time. When the water subsides and the waves stop, the sand on the beach gets buried, compacted, or lithified into sandstone. This is a good reservoir rock. Shallow water carbonate platforms, like reefs, are very important formations where we can find oil, especially here in the UAE. Here is an example of a reef. It is made up of coral and oceanic animals and plants. After these plants and animals died, their remains were buried and settled into sedimentary layers, lithified, and became sedimentary carbonate rock. They are formed in tropical or subtropical shallow oceans where life was plentiful. This rock also makes very good reservoirs. 
exploration geologists always get very excited when they find reef formations because these formations could contain another large oil field. There are three types of reef platforms or formations where we can find oil. The first is at the reef's platform edge, made of strong shells and oolic banks with high wave energy. These can form into long reefs that extend along the ocean shore. Sometimes they also break off, fall into deep water, and are buried. The second carbonate platform is found at the edge of lagoons. Lagoons are salt water inlets protected from big waves. The plants and animals there, which are different from the ocean, also die and are buried, building reefal formations in the mud and shells found. The third type of platform is formed by carbonate slopes made from grains from reefs and banks carbonate mud and carbonate mud flows. Here's another reef. Oceanic plants and animals, animals like clams and other shellfish, grow and die there, creating reefs from their crushed shells that grow out of the water. Eventually silt and sand accumulate, allowing trees and other land plants and animals to grow until these reefs become little islands. Sapkas are abundant throughout the western region of the UAE. They are also important formations for petroleum geologists. Sapkas are formed when water accumulates on salt flats and then evaporates. This leaves a white layer of sulfates made up of anhydrite and gypsum. When these sulfates evaporate out, you get three layers of material, anhydrite, gypsum mush, gypsum crystals. It is these three layers that define a sapka. What is interesting about a sapka is these hard layers are impermeable to oil and form a seal or trap. Many times we find oil trapped under sapkas. Again, geologists look for underground sapkas. As we described earlier, weathering and erosion cause sediment to be transported to the oceans. There, at places, this sediment builds up at the ocean's edge where it creates a continental shelf. Eventually, the weight of this sediment shifts causing landslides that form submarine fans. Finer sediments are found on the outer fan edge. Now we're going to look at some actual geological formations where oil may be found. Previously, I described geological formations that geologists look for when searching for oil. Within these layers of rock that extend over a large area, structures develop. A structure is a distortion of a rock formation. Let's go back to divergent, convergent, and transform plate margin movement. These different movements cause crustal deformation. The Earth's crust bends or breaks. The energy released by these movements puts the crust under such stress that it bends or breaks. This is how rock structures are formed. There are three types of geological structures. Joints, faults, folds. We find oil in all three. Joints are nothing but fractures or cracks. Sometimes when a rock is under high stress it starts to crack and causes a change in the rock characteristics. Faults are caused when the rock breaks and moves away or apart relative to the other side. They are caused by stress created by the movement of the plate margins. With joints, the rock formation and shape does not change. It merely cracks. In faults, however, there is a change in the formation and shape. This is caused when the rock breaks and moves.